Hi, I'm Yin Zhou from Hanson Research Group here at Florida State University. I'm here to briefly introduce my paper recently published on PCCP titled Examining the Role of Acceptor Molecule Structure in Self-Assemble Bilayers, Surface Loading, Stability, NH Transfer, and Upconverted Emission. Essentially, we synthesize five different acceptor molecules and incorporate them into self-assemble bilayers on a zucchini dioxide surface to harness photon upconversion via triple-triple annihilation. Then we studied how the structure of acceptor molecules influenced the surface loading, the stability, the energy transfer within the system, and the upconverted behavior. Photon upconversion via triplet triple annihilation is a two photon in one photon out process. So in the system, there will be sensitizer molecule as well as the acceptor molecules. First of all, sensitizer molecule will be excited to the first excited singlet state, then go through a fast intersystem crossing to the triplet state. Then triplet energy will be transferred from the sensitizer molecule to acceptor molecule. When two acceptor triplets close to each other, one will go back to the ground state and the other one will go to the first excited singlet state. Then we can harvest a high energy photon from the fluorescence of the acceptor singlets. In our group, we used a unique bilayer structure to harvest photon conversion. Here we have our acceptor molecule chemically bound to the metal oxide surface through a phosphonate binding group. Then the sensitizer coordinate was the acceptor molecules through a link zinc linking ion. And we prepared this bilayer by a stepwise soaking method where we take the metal oxide surface and soak them into the acceptor molecule and then the zinc linking ion solution and then the sensitizer molecule solution. Recently, our group reported a study for two energetically similar dimethyl-inthrazine molecule acting as acceptor in our bilayer system. We found that changing the phosphonate binding group from para to meta position resulted in a three-fold decrease in TTAUC emission quantum yield. So in an effort to further elucidate the role of acceptor structure on TDAUC in bilayer film, here we report synthesis of new anthracene dyes and the study of their photophysics properties in solution on fumes and combined with sensitizer in the bilayer film. First of all, we design and synthesis acceptor molecules. Acceptor 1, 2, 4 were prepared by following previously published procedures with minor changes. And the multi-step synthesis of acceptor 5 is shown here. So initially, we attempt to generate 5D using MBS following a previously published procedure. However, the formination was unsuccessful, presumably due to the higher reactivity of the 9 position of anthracene core. So instead, the product was synthesized by oxidizing the methyl groups with chromium trioxide, followed by the reduction and the re-aromatization of the anthraquinol core and further reduction to obtain 5C. Bromination at the methyl precision was then achieved with phosphorus tribromine, and then finally the ester group cleave to yield 5. We then study the photophysics property of acceptors in solution. As we can see, the absorption features of 1 to 5 are similar to the characteristic vibronic progression of anthracene, but with redshift. And the trend in emission for acceptors is comparable to that we observed for their absorption. Acceptor 5 with the lowest absorption extinction coefficient has the smallest emission quantum yield as well, which is due to a fourfold decrease in KR and a order of magnitude increase in KNR. We then prepared acceptor monolayer by simply soaking a zucronium di dioxide film in acceptor solution for 12 hours. The dyes exhibit the same absorption features 
as they in their inclusion. And upon excitation at 360 nanometer, blue emission is observed for all acceptor monolayer films with similar but, but broadened emission features when compared to in solution. We then studied the surface loading of acceptor monolayer. Acceptor 3 has the lowest surface coverage and the largest center to center distance between acceptor molecules. However, other intermolecular spacing are sufficiently close so that intermolecular dexter energy transfer and triple triple annihilation can occur. We then studied the photostability of acceptor monolayers by monitoring change in absorption spectra of the film under continuous 365 nanometer irradiation. And as we can see, of the films, four and five were the least stable ones while one and two are slightly more stable. Interestingly, three monolayers was the most stable of the series, which may be due to the steric hindrance or a change in reactivity at the 910 position due to the phosphonate groups. So bilayer film was prepared by soaking the zucrone dioxide film into acceptor, then zinc linking ion, then sensitizer molecule solution. Each step is monitored by UVVIS or ATR-IR spectroscopy. Zinc was chosen as a metal linking ion because it is photophysically and electrochemically inert under the measurement condition applied here. Bilayer samples for emission measurements were prepared in the glob box following a previously published procedure. Upon a direct excitation of sensitizer molecule at 532 nanometer, all the bilayer exhibited blue emission featuring from 420 to 500 nanometer that resembles the acceptor monolayer emission under direct excitation of acceptors at 360 nanometer. Quantum yields for the TTA-UC processes of the bilayers are calculated here. While triple triple annihilation quantum yield is larger in 5 than for 2 to 4, the dramatically lower fluorescence quantum yield and the small fraction of a converted state that generates photon leaving the sample, resulting in a significantly lower overall emission from the upconverted state of 5. However, it's worth noting that in an integrated bilayer TTA UC solo cell, the electron injection from the upconverted state is typically faster than the KR, KNR, or back energy transfer reported here, and may not be affected by fluorescence quantum yield or how much a photon generated from upconverted state will leave the sample. As such, we anticipate an increase the photocurrent from 5 relative to 2 to 4. We also performed intensity dependence study. For this emission intensity for bilayers film versus 532 nanometer excitation intensity diagram, we can see that all five bilayers exhibit a quadratic to linear intensity dependence, which is symptomatic of a TTA UC mechanism. The quadratic to linear crossover intensity, also known as ith value, was found for all five bilayers. Ith value is very important because it represents the intensity at which upconversion become the most efficient. From ice value, we calculated a second order rate constant for triplet triple annihilation, gamma TDA. We also calculated acceptor triplet lifetimes. So from this table, we can see that if one were able to combine the gamma TDA of five, while still retain the long triplet excited state lifetime of one, ice value on the order of um, on the order of solar flux were feasible for TTA using emission from the bilayer. And from the gamma TTA combined with acceptor center to center distance, we calculated the, the triplet exciton diffusion constant. The origin of the two order magnitude of the higher diffusion constant for five is currently unclear to us. But we could envision that the lower steric hindrance or the force the relative orientation dictated by the missile groups at the 2 6 position would favor face to face stacking of the acceptor molecules, 
which might simply facilitate the diffusion of the triplet species. In conclusion, we designed and synthesized five different acceptor molecules and incorporated them into the self-assemble bilayers. We then studied the surface loading, the stability, energy transfer, and upconverted emission. And the fr from the result, we found that firstly, increased the triplet triple annihilation quantum yield is the key factor in lowering the ith value and increasing the upconversion quantum yield in the bilayers. Second, the structure of the acceptor molecules can be, but is not always, a key factor in influencing the TTAUC in the bilayer structures. Uh, finally, measuring and modeling the structure at the interfaces will be a necessary step in fully explaining then controlling migration, triple energy yeah. transfer, back energy transfer, and ultimately the triplet triple annihilation efficiency in self-assemble bilayers. You can find more detailed data and discussion on our article. The volume and page number are listed on the top right corner. Please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at HansenFSU. Thanks for listening.